Good morning. Good morning, wives. I made it in the morning hour. <laughs> this is a good sleeping day today. Good morning. Listen, we are going to jump right into today's live because it is happy self-care saturday happy self-care saturday and i do not want to hold y'all long good morning i do not want to hold y'all long i want to allow y'all to go on about y'all day prioritize yourself and do something that you enjoy doing all right and so um i wanted to come on and talk about some things um, I'm going to share a little things with you and then I'm going to let y'all go ahead and start y'all day. Good morning. If I have time, if I have time, depending on how long this thing, let me stay on here before it kicks me off. Um, I will allow you to, you know, if you have a question or you have questions and you want to ask, I will answer your questions. So you can actually put those questions in the, um, good morning. I think they have a question box here that you can put your questions in. Child, I'm still, sometimes I come on here and act like I don't even know what I'm doing. Like I had never been on here a day in my life. Um, <laughs> I'm just going with the, going with it. Listen, I want to first start off before we even pray, before we even read the scripture, before we even get into the word. I want to first start off by saying, wife, it is mandatory. It is mandatory in this new year that you get a hold or connected to good morning that you get a hold or connected to a curriculum that will help you navigate through life and equip you for the days to come ahead i'm gonna say that again in this new year in this due 2023 year it is mandatory for you to get a hold to or connect it with a curriculum that will help you navigate through life and equip you for the days to come. And I am not talking only about your marriage. I am not talking only about your marriage. You are going to need more than information. You are going to need more than information. You are going to need to develop a plan that will lead you into a deeper understanding, dedication to devotional time. You are going to have to consecrate yourself. Good morning. This is the hour of consecration. Consecration. Because y'all know I mess a word up. This is the hour to consecrate yourself. All right. Listen, that was this. I just want to just start off by saying that. And let me just give you the definition of consecration. All right. Because just like I come on here and encourage wives to do their work, I always tell you, I always tell you, I would not be any good for you. I would not be any benefit to you if I, as a coach, was not doing my work. I would not be able to come and share with you and, you know, uh, encourage you and support you and uplift you if I was not doing my ongoing work. And so in my time of studying, in my time of devotion, in my time with God this week, um, these these are some of the things that have come up and I just always like to echo what I got in my time I like to share with you. And so um, to be consecrated is the act of dedicating yourself to the service and worship of God to make holy or to make him holy or dedicate to a higher purpose. OK, to consecrate means the act of dedicating yourself to the service and worship of God. Why do you understand that spending that one on one time, what I call what I call your self care time, that's your time with God, spending that time with God is part of worship, spending that devotion time with God is part of consecrating yourself, spending that time with God is part of you doing your work, spending that time with God is Him 
um, is you allowing him to pour in you and allowing him to um, guide you um, on your on your journey in a more higher in a, in a more higher way. It's not just about your marriage. I always tell you that it's not just about your marriage. Your marriage injury is your invitation to God's process. <laughs> That's what your marriage injury is. Your marriage injury is an invite to change. Your marriage injury is an invite to maturity. Your marriage injury is an invite to growth. Your marriage injury is God saying, look, all right, yep, I see what's going on in your marriage. And I see how your husband acting. And I see how he been he behaving. And I see the things that's been said. And I see the things he's been doing. And we're going to deal with that. But in the meantime, in the meantime, as I deal with him, let me do and work some things out in you. So I just want to start off by first saying that it's vital. It is vital. It is vital in this time that wives get connected to a curriculum, get connected to um, a, a plan where she is developing, learning, growing, and consecrating herself. All right. And in today's lesson, we are going to discover some of the reasons why this is so important. And it kind of like just ties in um, to what it says. Um, consecration is the act of dedicating yourself to the service and worship of God. It's, it's like spending that one-on-one -on -one time. I call it self-care. I call it self-care to make, um, to make holy, um, to separate him, to, you know, sketch out some time for him, um, to dedicate yourself to a higher purpose, not only about your marriage. All right. This is the hour to do your work. All right. Lord, please don't let me be and put nothing in here. So listen, I'm going to start off by reading this Bible verse before we even get started. Um, and then I'm going to say a quick prayer, do my little introduction, and we're going to roll from there. All right. So I'm going to start with John chapter 6, verses 66 to 69. John chapter 6, verses 66 to 69. And at this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the 12 and asked, are you also going to leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, no. To whom, will, to whom will we go? You have the words that give eternal life. You have the words that will give eternal life. We believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. And last week, and the week before, I think I had been telling you, we was going to talk about Peter. We was going to talk about Peter and his life. But we we're going to also talk about Peter because Peter, in my opinion, in my opinion, was one of Jesus' best disciples. He was, he was his favorite, all right? He was his favorite. And I say he was his favorite because every time you turn around, Peter was doing something that Jesus had to call him out on. And um, Peter, Peter, I like Peter because he is a great illustrator of faith and what faith what faith looks like in action and so i wanted to share um I, i'm going to continue to share some some points from peter um for the rest of this month just talking about and really helping whites to get back in alignment with their faith based off of this chapter based off of these verses i want you to understand wife at some point on your journey you will stop believing at some point on your journey you will stop believing as time passes, as life goes, as different experiences and different things come up, as different changes come up, as no changes happen, as you continue to go forth, you going to church, you reading your Bible, you're fasting, you're praying, you're studying your scriptures, you're doing all the things that the, that the you know the church told you to do. You're doing everything that you hear like the YouTube videos have told you to do. <laughs> like I heard her say this and I heard him say that and, and this person over here say do this. You're doing all the things. You're doing all the retros. You're doing everything. You done bought all the books. You know, you done, you done outlined everything in your, in your devotional. You're doing everything. You're doing everything. And even then, even then, there will come a time on this journey where you will stop believing. Okay? There will come a point on this journey at you will stop believing. You will start questioning yourself. You will start to wonder, good morning. Did I really hear from God? Did God really, uh, you know, did I really, did, you know, get, did God really say what he said? Is this what this scripture really means? Am I really on the right track? Is this something I'm, so, I'm supposed to really do? Um, you will start to question yourself. You will start to uh, doubt. You will have questions, okay? And that's when, that's when having a scripture, the Bible, versus having a direct word from God will make a difference. That's when having what the Bible says 
versus what God direct word says will make a difference. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit today. So let me say a quick prayer and then we're going to go ahead and start from there. All right. So, Father, we bless you on this morning, God. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace and mercy, God. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, as we welcome you now into this session. God, I pray, Lord, that you remove all distractions, God. Lord, I pray, God, that the wife who needs to receive this on today, this word on today, God, I pray, God, that you would bring her here to hear it, God. Lord, I pray that you remove uh, anything from her heart, God, that is not pleasing to you, God. Lord, bring forth confirmation and revelation, God. And Lord, help her to make a decision today to make changes to do something different in her life god as she continues to trust you on this journey lord we praise you in advance and i pray and ask these things in your son jesus name amen all right so for the ones who may not know my name is coach t i am a christian mental health wife coach and marriage consultant i usually help wives who are separated from their husbands whether they are separated inside the home or outside of the home meaning the husband may be not living in the home or he may be in the home but he's living in a separate room living a separate life living a separate lifestyle um so i help those wives usually these wives are dealing with um adultery in the marriage abandonment um addiction um mental and emotional abuse and so my goal, my goal is to help wives to um, navigate, to navigate through those mental and emotional um, circumstances in a way that is healthy and effective. Okay, I help her to confront some of the things that she needs to confront. I help her to take a look at herself and I help her to do her inner work. We focus not only on her marriage. Yes, we do talk about that and we go through those grief steps. But we also help the wife. I also help the wife to do her inner work and look at some of the things that maybe she may have contributed to towards the marriage. All right. And so, um, yeah, my areas of expertise is in um, behavioral health, faith in marriage, particularly wives who are separated from their spouses. All right. And so from there, I want to just jump into this question. What happens? What happens when doubt kicks in? What happens when doubt kicks in? What usually is the next thing that happens when doubt kicks in? When doubt kicks in, it usually, usually stir up some type of fear. It usually stir up some type of fear. And the only goal, the only goal of fear is to keep the wife from faith. The only goal, the only goal of fear is to keep the wife from faith. Fear is a holding cell full of anxiety and uncertainties. And its goal is to numb you. Its goal is to numb you. And its goal is to keep you from moving forward. But not only does it hold you up, it also, it also pauses. It also pauses the hands of God from working on your behalf. All right. And the reason it does that is because God's word is clear. It tells us faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So basically, God's like, if you don't have faith, there's nothing I can do for you. <laughs> I give everybody, I give everybody a, a certain amount of faith to work with. I give everybody a certain amount to work with. Some people may have more faith than the others. Some people may have, you know, um, a mustard seed. Some people may have a whole balloon full. Some people may have a whole tree full of faith. It just depends. But everybody, everybody has a amount of faith. And so when fear, when doubt happens, then fear happens. When fear happens, you can't get to faith. And if you don't have faith, God's not able to work on your behalf. Okay? He is not able to work on your behalf. So wise, you have to know that God only, only wants your trust. That is what his main goal is out of all of this. God is after your trust. In a nutshell, that's what this marital restoration journey about is, is all about. Trusting God. And so many wives, so many wives, are they have questions. That's understandable. So many wives are trying to figure this out. That's understandable. So many wives are trying to do things in their own way. You can't keep doing that. <laughs> you, can't, you can't keep doing that. God is after your trust. And a lot of times, the, the biggest question that I always get is, 
Will God allow me? Will God allow me to stay in a marriage like this? Will God really, does God really want me to stand in this type of marriage? Does God really, really want me to uh, just keep going along with this man foolery? Does God really, really want me to keep, you know, just, just, just being in this in this type of pain and this type of hurt and the question is that no he don't he don't want you being no pain god don't want you to be you know, be hurt but what he do want you is to trust him what he do want you to do is to trust him he do want you to believe in him he do want you to know that if i have called you to this if i have called you to this then there's a reason and you have to learn how to trust my process even if it hurts even if it stings even if it don't make sense even if it seems like this is don't this is just unreal god ain't asking you he's not asking you to normalize what's not normal god's not asking you to be in agreement with your husband's um unhealthy choices and his and his bad behavior god's not asking you to do that and so i think a lot of times why wives get this journey all messed up is because they are only looking at well, how he getting away with this and how he doing this and how he doing this, but God's calling me to this. How is it that he's doing that and he's doing that and he can do this and he's doing this and all these things taking places, but God is calling me to this. And this is where, this is where having accountability comes in place. This is where having God is coming in place. This is where having someone who's saying, look, I know it don't make sense. I know it ain't right, girl. I know he, I know he acting a plum fool and I know it's like you have to do all the work, but you have to learn how to trust God's process. All right. You have to learn how to trust God's process. God knows his daughters. Okay. He knows his daughters and he knows that we need help. <laughs> <laughs> he knows that we need help and that's why and that's why he left his helper with us all right if you have um per you know profess jesus christ as your lord and savior if you have a jesus christ um as your lord and savior um one of the gifts that you get from him immediately immediately is the helper all right the holy spirit comes on the inside of you the holy spirit comes and live on the inside of you all right um he places his spirit on the inside of you as a guide to get through life and and the benefit the benefit of having the helper living on the inside of you comes with nine additional gifts okay so you don't just get just the holy spirit you get the holy spirit and nine additional gifts that goes along with it if you tap into it okay the holy spirit is guaranteed you got that one hands down the other nine gifts have to be um mature develop strengthen okay those gifts take time but they are available they are available if the wife wants them okay if you tap in if you go deeper if you you know believe god if you get into that that secret place with him you spend that time with your spending that time with him if you are consecrating yourself if you are having that devotional time with him and you meet with him and you having that self-care one-on-one time with him on a regular these gifts are given these gifts are given and so I talked to you again, I talked to you about this on last week about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to share with you again what the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are. All right. We have the word of wisdom. We have the word of knowledge. We have faith. We have the gifts of the gifts of healings. We have gifts of miracles. We have prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, discerning spirits, um, the speaking, speaking in tongues or interpretation of tongues. Those are the nine additional gifts that comes along with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Those are the nine additional gifts that comes along with the Holy Spirit. However, however, those gifts are not necessarily given to you at the time of receiving Jesus Christ. Those gifts are there. They're dormant until you start to exercise your faith and start to really, really go deeper with God. And this is what I'm trying to emphasize on this morning wise in order for you to do and to continue to do the journey well because a lot of people have started this journey a lot of people have seen small victories a lot of people have seen you know different things that has manifested and come forth but in order for you to do this journey long term and do it well you're going to have to tap into these nine gifts you're going to have to tap into your power all right the power that god has given to you okay this is this is this free game right here this is this is all for you all right this marital restoration journey requires you to go deeper, point blank, period. And the ones who go deeper are the ones who receive, all right? The ones who go deeper are the ones who receive. But the ones who stay on the surface, then surface is all you get, okay? This journey requires you to go deeper. Not only do you have to believe God first, but you also have to do, but you also have to do your part and get in order 
and tap into these areas. Because if you don't, if you don't, good morning, you would never, you would never, you would never, and I'm saying never. I know a lot of people don't, you don't never say never. You don't never call say never. You would never get to experience that life that God has for you. You would never get to experience that, that, that good, good life that God has for you. You won't get to that place. You have to tap in and you have to tap in because different things will happen and different things will occur and different things will come up where you are going to need more than just your Bible scripture, where you're going to need more than fasting, where you're going to need more than your decrees and your declaring, where you're going to need more than just, oh, I heard my, you know, my mama say this, or I heard the pastor say this, oh, I seen this person do this. No, you're going to need some power for yourself. Okay. You're going to need your own power. You can't be still looking on the other woman's social media page uh, and while God's trying to discipline you and perfect these gifts in you. You can't be still saying, oh, my husband this and my husband that and God trying to give you uh, the gifts of healing, okay? You can't be, you know, still all in his face and, you know, oh, he doing this and he doing that and you ain't come home last night and why you ain't call me and why you ain't touch me and why you, you can't be doing all that. <laughs> you ain't, you can't be doing all that. All right, you can't be doing those things and then expect and then expect to kick into your power. All right, this power, this power comes with surrendering. This power comes with surrendering. Okay, you have to surrender your way, wife, your will, your emotion. You have to surrender in order for you to tap into this. That's the only way God will be able to work through you like he needs to. The only way God is going to be able to work through you like he needs to is by you surrendering. Okay. Looking on her page, going through his phone, <laughs> tapping, trying to, you know, track down where he is, following him. Oh, I know he hang up here. I know he do this. Uh, I was, oh God, I ain't going to even tell y'all. <laughs> I was bad. I was, I was horrible. Ugh. But that's a, and that's why I always tell wives, do not go through that man's phone, okay? Just don't go through that man's phone. The pictures and the images. You don't want to be trying to like, you know what I'm saying? Get your you. That's that's where that mentalness stuff kicks in. At you got this mental picture of you know your husband, or your, a mental picture of how this person looks, or a mental picture of you know different words that you don't read. You don't want that stuff on you. You you don't want that on you. And so if until you get to a place where you are able to surrender those things, well you you see him but you don't see him. Well okay, this is what's going on. All right, but I'm still trusting God. Until you get to a place where you surrendering those things, wife. That that's then and only then is God able to use you like he like he like he really really can use you all right um that's what it's all about okay that's that's what it's all about you got to get to a place where you are surrendering everything to God okay once you start surrendering your things over to God then God is able then God is able to begin doing his work in you okay so i want to share this story um uh Jesus had a bunch of followers in the beginning of his ministry. All right. He had a bunch of followers in the beginning of his ministry. And a lot of people, a lot of people was believing in him. We talked and now I'm getting to the point about, you know, her doubt. Um, <laughs> I was horrible. Listen, girl, I already know. <laughs> um, so in the beginning, a lot of people was believing Jesus and believing his ministry. Okay. A lot of people was believing him. They were encouraged by his words and, um, by his teachings, but, um, the more and more he began to teach and the more and more he began to share some things, um, they were not so sure about it. <laughs> it was like, nah, Jesus, we was with you when you said this and Jesus, we was with you when you were saying this, but now you talking like this. Like, I don't, I don't really know about that. I don't really know if I'm in agreement with that Lord. Okay. And so the more and more he started sharing things, you know, on a, on a deeper level, the less they become, they became, you know, interested and, and they start to doubt. They start to doubt. Okay. Jesus at this point was not just giving out milk anymore. <laughs> he wasn't just giving out milk anymore. He started to give them meat and they ain't like that. And many times on this journey, the moment, the moment when meat is starting to be served, this is when a lot of people back out. When meat is starting to be served, this is when a lot of people are like, oh, I don't, I ain't, I don't know about that. Oh, I ain't, I ain't got the money for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about this. I'm going to just, I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. You know, they got all these excuses when the, when the meat is being served, everybody want to back out. Okay. 
So that's why I always talk about, you know, when whites only want encouragement. You know, I get a lot of, you know, DMs and, you know, messages on, you know, YouTube sometimes. And, you know, um, and I understand. I understand when you're in this kind of position, you need encouragement. You need somebody to build you up. You need somebody to tell you that it's, it's going to be okay. And I can tell you that all day long. It is going to be okay. It will. It will eventually be okay. But... There comes a time when you need more than just occur and, and you need more than just encouragement, okay? I can encourage you all day long, but I can guarantee, I can guarantee you it will not sustain you. Me encouraging you would not be enough, okay? Encouragement alone is almost like taking medicine for a problem that you know you have, uh, that you know you need surgery for. You're like, it's gonna stop that, you know, that pain temporarily. Or it's like, you know, taking medicine for a, a cavity that you have and you know that cavity needs to be pulled out. Eventually, it's gonna have to be pulled out. I'm only gonna be able to give you this medicine and it's gonna only do something for you temporarily. But after that, that pain still will return. You know, that pain will still return. And so that's what encouragement is. Encouragement, I can give you encouragement. It's going to help you. It's going to, you know, get you through. You will have that moment of, of relief. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like people who go to church every Sunday and that's all they do. They just go to church, they get their word, and they, you know, they go through their week. And all during the week, they don't do no studying. They ain't going, you know, they ain't going after the, after the word. They ain't writing down. They ain't journaling. They ain't spending no time with God. And they come back on Sunday again looking for that encouragement. Encouragement enough uh, alone, wife, would not be enough. Okay? It would not be enough. It's only a temporarily fix okay and that's what the bible talks about you know the joy of the lord is our strength we have to tap into more than just encouragement we need joy and in order for you to get to that joy you have to tap into the deeper things of god okay you have to tap into the deeper things you need more than encouragement you have to do your work or else like i mentioned earlier you will settle for a life that god never intended for you to happen for you to have you will settle for a life that god never intended for you to have all right. So when the people started to uh, walk away from Jesus, when the people started to walk away from Jesus, Jesus turned to his disciples, to the ones he had chosen, quote unquote, to the ones he had chosen. He turned to them and asked them, well, will you go to? Will you go to? He asked that question because he discerned his disciples had questions, too. They had some of the same thoughts and same concerns and same doubts that the people had. They was doubting, too. They was like, well, I don't, I don't know about this, Jesus. I know I know you called me to this, but I don't, I don't really know about this. I ain't really sure about this now. So Jesus called them out. He's like, would you go, too? You want, you want to leave with them? Because I chose you, okay? I didn't choose all of them, but I chose you. And since I chose you, I want to know. Good morning. I want to know, will you go, too? Will you go, too? But here come your boy, Peter. Listen, Peter is my boy. <laughs> Peter, hurry up and snap into reality. He hurry up and snap into to reality. Peter was like, no, 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 no. We cool, God. We cool. We cool. We, we cool on you. <laughs> Peter was like, no, no, no. Let them go. Let them go. I know differently. All right. I know differently. We could do the same thing as them. But, you know, Jesus, you the one who have all the answers. You have eternal life in your hands. You hold you hold eternal life in your hands. You have all the answers to this life. Why are we going why are we going to go anywhere else? Why are we going to do something different, all right? And these words coming from Peter meant a lot. They meant a lot because prior to this moment, prior to this moment and earlier on when Jesus first came to the disciples, he asked them, "Who do you think I am?" Who 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 do you think I am? He first started out by saying, you know, you know, what what who people think I am and who you know who people say I am. But then he turned around, he asked him, Who do you think I am? Who do you think I am? And Peter shouted out, You are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. So I want to read um Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 19. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 19. All right. And it says, When Jesus came to the region of the C word, Sarasus Philip. Listen, go back and read it yourself because I, I can't pronounce some of these words. Um, <laughs> when Jesus showed up on the scene, okay? When he showed up on the scene, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? Who do people say the son of man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, Okay. But then Jesus go down, going down to 15. Then Jesus said, but what about you? What about you? Who do you say? Good morning. Who do you say I am? And my boy, Simon Peter, he came through. He came through. And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. 
And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by, but by my father in heaven. This was not revealed to you by uh, flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are the Peter. You are the Peter on this rock. I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Listen, wife, Peter had tapped in to his deeper he t peter had tapped into his divine and he got connected to his divine uh uh gift okay he was operating in his divine gift he was operating in his divine gift and this divine gift is called the word of knowledge all right this divine gift is called the word of knowledge listen i want to come back and kind of like unpack some of this i want to go back and unpack some of this when Jesus came on board and he was like, listen, you know, I know, you know, they say this, they say this, you know, they, some people call me this person. Some people call me this person. Some people saying this, some people saying this, but I want to know what y'all think. And I want to know what y'all think. Cause I'm going to choose y'all to walk with me. I want to know what you say I am. I want I want to know who you say I am because I'm going to choose you to do something amazing. I want you to tell me who you say I am. And this is why I always go to wise and explain to them. If God has chosen you, to stand for an unhealthy marriage, or if God has said, hey, you know, I know what he's doing is jacked up. I know you have biblical reason to leave this marriage, but I'm asking you to stay. I, I, I know, I know, I know what he's doing ain't right. I, I know this ain't, I know this ain't right. I know this ain't cool, but I'm asking you to stand still. I'm asking you to be still. I'm asking you to trust me. I'm asking you to wait on me. I'm asking you to, you know, give me an opportunity to show you that I want to show you something different concerning your husband. I want to show you something different in your marriage. This is why I always say, if you have been called to this journey, if God specifically chose you to do this journey, he called you and chose you for this journey for a specific reason. OK, he called you for a specific reason. So he did not care about what all the other people thought of him. He didn't care about what all these other people thought he, he, who he was and what he was. He wanted to know about the ones that he was chose that he was choosing to do something because he knew what he had in mind. And he had a specific call for Peter. He had a specific assignment for Peter to do. So he wants to know, what do you think? You are the ones that I, I'm choosing. You are the ones that I'm choosing for this. And so I want to know what do you think? And this is why it's so important for wives to not just go based off of what uh, the, the pastor say or what the counselor say or what the therapist say or my mama them say or my friends them say or even what just the Bible alone say. Yes, you need the Bible. I ain't going to never, ever get on here and discount the Bible because the Bible is your, is, your, is your bread. That is your daily bread. You need the Bible. You, you need the Bible. But there are some times when God gives you a word that lines up with his Bible, with, with his word in the scripture, but it, it will be a direct word to you. OK, it would be a direct word to you. God knew that he had something bigger for Peter to do. He had something bigger for him to do. And so because Peter, because Peter had tapped into his, his to, into his divine gifts, he was able to receive a word of knowledge. He was able to receive a word of knowledge from the from the holy God, from, you know, from my heavenly father. And that's how he was able to know you're not just, you know, just just a teacher. No, you're the Messiah. You are the living God. You are the living God. And that's when Jesus knew, OK, I can use them. Yeah, they ain't perfect. Yeah, they made mistakes. Yeah, they're going to cut up sometimes. They might even say a cuss word here and there. They might cut somebody. They might get in somebody's face. You might, you know, get a person, get a person a finger or whatever. They ain't perfect. They, they got flaws. They got all kind of hiccups and stuff. But at the end of the day, they know who I am. At the end of the day, they know how to get in contact with me. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, they know how to reach me. At the end of the day, they know how to get back and connect with me. Okay, and so God was looking. And that's this is what God was looking for. He was not just looking for just any old body. Oh, you this. Oh, you that. Oh, you this. No, He wanted to know: Have you tapped into your divine gifts? Because it's only when you tap into your divine gifts, wise, are you able to receive the other benefits that God has for you in this life. Okay, that's only that's only when you're able to receive those things. Okay. 
Okay. So Peter had tapped in. He had tapped in. And so he already knew your boy is real. <laughs> like Jesus is real. He's the real deal. Like ain't no, ain't no if, ands, buts about it. So these other people may be leaving because they don't really, really know. They don't really know him like that. But oh, I know. I got a direct word. I know he is who he say he is. So God, where we going? You know, you the one who got all the answers. You the one who holds, you, you hold eternal life, you know, in your hands. And so we're going to keep following you. We're going to keep believing you. And why? Guess what? That is all Jesus is requiring of you. He's requiring you to keep believing in him. When doubt kicks in, he is requiring you to keep believing in him. You have to keep believing. All right. I will always, always, always echo. You got to hear from God. I ain't going to ever stop telling y'all that. <laughs> I ain't going to ever stop telling you that. You need to hear from God because hearing from God is what is going to allow you to move forward on your journey. Okay, hearing from God, in spite of what you are seeing, in spite of the difficult challenges you may be facing, in spite of what he's doing, in spite of what's not going right, in spite of what it looked like, feel like, seemed like, in spite of those things, you need a word from God. God gave me a word. God gave me a direct word. And that's how I know that, that's how I knew that I was supposed to be doing what, I'm, what, I'm, what I was doing as far as my marriage goes. That's how I knew I was supposed to keep doing this. When everybody else around me was saying, you know, no, 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 or you don't got to do that, or you don't got to deal with that, that's how I knew. Now, I want to pause here and say this. A lot of times, because of this type of assignment, this is where a lot of your mental and emotional and uh, physical distress comes in. And so a lot of times what was happening on this journey was, uh, I had family members and I had friends who was concerned about my mental state, about my emotional state, about my physical state. And let me tell you something, that stuff will get uh, uh, interrupted. It, it will get interrupted because some of the things that God's asked you to do, it will mess with those areas. And this is why it's so important for wives to prioritize this. And so they were concerned. They were concerned about me in, in that state. And you ought to be concerned about yourself because those areas will rise up. And this is why you have to take care of yourself if you have accepted this journey and you are going forward with it. You have to, have to, have to take care of yourself. Okay? So I know for me, that is what God... Uh, 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 gave me in order for me to move forward on my journey and something in me had shifted at that moment it shifted nobody no more could not tell me that God was God wasn't gonna do this nobody no nobody couldn't tell me that this wasn't gonna happen because I had a direct word and God shifted something on the inside of me something resonated on the inside of my spirit and I knew that this is what what God had said was gonna come now as those moments was happening over time, as I continue to go deeper into this, as I continue to do more, more research and I start to do my study in and I start working on myself, over time, what ended up happening is God started not just giving me words about my husband, but then he started giving me words about other people. And then he started giving me words about stuff at work. And then he would give me words about my children. And then he was giving me words about my, about my family members. And then he was giving me words about what he wanted me to do. So it don't just stop with your husband. Like I always say, your marriage injury is, 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 is breaking ground. It's training ground. That's the that's the front door entry of this. But God wants to go deeper with you. Okay. He wants to go deeper with you. And so all of a sudden, I had a knowing that everything would be all right. I, I knew. I started seeing things. I started having dreams. I was getting confirmations. And I was one who was not big on the prophetic. I I was like, you know, I felt like too many people um was dependent on a prophetic word and i and me for for me i like i want that i didn't want to just be dependent on a prophetic word i want i like it god if you got something to say to me i want you to say it to me i want you to say it directly to me and so that was my that was my go-to i wanted god to speak to me i want nobody to come and get oh i got a word for you sister or you know i got a word for you no i i, uh, I can hear from god i want god to talk to me <laughs> I want God to talk to me and then I can line up what God has said to me with what you are saying. Okay. You need a word from God. All right. And so that's what worked for me. I received the word of wisdom from God about my marriage. That's what, that's what God gave me. God gave me a direct word. God told me my husband was coming back home. That was his direct word to me. I know some wives I hear say, you know, God told me to, you know, be still. Uh, you know, God said I'm going to have a testimony after this. Uh, you know, God said that he's going to save my husband. Or, you know, God said, you know, God gives different ones different words. But God gave me a direct word because I asked a direct question. 
God, what is going on? What is going to happen with this? Because at this moment, at this time, I had been dealing with this for a very long time. Um, my husband leaving was not the first time that he had left. Okay, that was the longest he had love, but it wasn't the first time he had love. And so I had been dealing with it for a very long time. And so I asked the question, God, what is going to happen with this? Like, what do you want me to do? Like, you know, what's going on? And Doc, God gave me a direct word. God said, your husband be home. And once he gave me that direct word, that kind of like led me into, you know, other things. Um, so once he told me that I was, I was good. That was the first time. And like I said, afterwards, he began telling me more things, more in detail about my marriage and about my husband. This is when I think I talked to y'all sometimes about, um, when the Lord would tell me, you know, you need to go check on your husband today. I need you to go by your husband's job today. Uh, you know, just go, go, go over there and just park, you know, in your husband's parking lot and just pray. And I was like, but I'm in the bed. <laughs> I'm in the bed already. But the Lord would have me do stuff like that. And I didn't understand. So this is why I always tell wives, you know, even if you don't understand something, be obedient. Be obedient to what God is telling you because all those little small little details makes a difference. Those little small things what God would tell me to do makes a difference. When God would tell me to go and park at his, you know, go park at his apartment. My husband, he wasn't even there sometimes. He would tell me to just park there and just, you know, go and just pray. Um, and I see my husband come in and then, he, you know, he would tell me, you know, all right, you can go home. You know, but that's it. I, was, I want you to do. Uh, he would tell me to go and check on him. And it was sometimes what I... I felt like I needed to uh, go see him. I, I, I needed to, you know, to connect with him because I felt so disconnected from him at some times. But I knew more about what my husband had going on when he was outside of the house than I knew when he actually came back in the house. <laughs> That's how detailed God was with me. I was journaling everything down. I was writing everything down. The dreams I was getting was too clear. I knew when my husband was getting ready to move. He was at his apartment for maybe like a year, a year and a half. And I started having this dream about um, a bus and I seen like a um, like a blue postal, you know, box. And I would see this dream and I was like, I understand what it's me. And I seen my husband standing next to this postal box. And so I was across the street and it looked like we were somewhere downtown or something. Um, and I was across the street and this bus had came in front of us. So the bus had kind of like separated me from him. And so after the bus had passed by... He wasn't there no more. And I was like, well, you know, what had happened? Like, you know, what's going on? And something hit me. Something came into my spirit immediately like, your husband's moving. And so, sure enough, I was going, because I was still doing my um, small group. And this, again, why it's so important for you to do your work. Because there's layers to these things. There's different things you need to be doing or you should be doing. A lot of whites are just doing one thing. And they're doing that same thing over and over again. And it's not been effective. No. Once you start this journey, you're supposed to be doing layers of things. And so, not only did I have my wife coach, but I also had a support group. I also had a marriage group that I was going to. I was also doing my own inner work at home. There was different things that you, there are different things that you should be doing or supposed to be doing on this journey. And so when I would leave my um, my support group on Sundays, um, my, my, the marriage group on Sundays, I would always go to him on you know, after, after I came from my group. And so they would give us like these little cards. And on these little cards would be like some really inspirational words or whatever. And the Lord would always tell me to get two, get one from, you know, for myself and then leave one on his door. Well, I had started getting fancy. <laughs> And I would bring tape in my car, so I would put it on his, you know, on the door. And so when I would go there, I would see that the door, like the tape was like snatched up. It, it looked like somebody had like just snatched it up. And so I said, hmm, this don't look like, you know, how it was before. Because before, when I was putting it over there, you know, he would just, you know, he would just take it off or whatever. But this time when I would go, it was like, it was just snatched up. And it looked like each time I went, every week I went, they was just snatching it up. And something hit me saying, he's not here no more. He, he's not here no more. And then one night I went over there and I didn't see his car and it looked real different all of a sudden. And that's when the Lord spoke to me and said, he's, he's no longer here. He's no longer here. And so when I tell wise, you know, to hear from God, I'm not saying just hear from God like some kind of strange woman or, you know, spooky type of thing. I'm telling you, you need to tap into that because God would give you details. He would give you in-depth details about your situation. The only way I was able to do well on my journey is because God was talking to me. The only way I was able to do well is in my journey because I was not believing no more about what other people were saying. I had to tap into what God was saying directly to me. All right. And so the details count. The details count. So as of today, as of today, I do. I walk into I walk in a few gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, and God has used those gifts, you know, to help me through, you know, different trying times. Um, 
when my husband was in a hospital, when he was in a hospital, he gave me the gift of healing. That's not something that I operate or do on a re you know on a regular, but at that time that was something he gave me, the the gifts of healing. Um he gave me the 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 gift of faith. You know, I had the doctors was coming in here telling me, you know, ma'am, you need to plan this man's funeral. You know, it's it's a wrap. Things are starting to shut down. You know, his his organs and stuff is starting to shut down. It won't be long now. You need to prepare your family. And I said, there's no way I'm preparing my family for that. And God had already told me that my husband was coming home. And so um, I did. And so I feel like God had gave me the gift of faith at that time. Um, I was operating frequently in the gift of the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Which those two kind of go hand in hand. Um, tongues was something I was doing on a regular. That's how I, every night um, I was talking to a young lady uh early in the week um something her situation is a little bit different than mine's but she had something going on with her with her husband and uh one of the things i always tell them you know what was a benefit for me was me being able to be in the hospital with my husband um because at nighttime that's when the warfare hit <laughs> at nighttime is when all kinds of hair broke loose okay my husband he didn't have one surgery he had several surgeries and so after the surgeries he would come back he would have uh you know you know, infection to kick in, you know, a fever, all those types of things. And so I would, you know, rest during the daytime, you know, you know, I had time in the daytime to rest, but at nighttime I was up like warfare, like up. So we had to, the nurses was coming in, you know, we had to put ice on him. We had to, you know, I had to pray over him. I had to stand over him. I, you know, this was a, this was a every night process. It's not like no one day thing. We had to do this every single night because every night it's like the enemy was coming. The, at nighttime you hear, you know, cold people was cold and people was, you know, leaving, uh, uh, you know, leaving, leaving here. The Lord was telling me, you got to get him out of here because they want to kill him. The, the Lord told me that about the hospital. He said, you got to get him out of here because they are trying to kill him. I said, God, you got to give me some you got to give me some 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 steps i don't know how to do this i don't know how to do this and um i always say i feel like god gave me favor because um being in the medical field i was connected with, to some of the doctors and i worked with a doctor who actually um who wife was the one who was doing my husband's surgery and oh i'm getting emotional just thinking about that jesus oh oh god <laughs> listen oh Mm. because i work with his because i work with her husband i work with her husband i knew her and and and, and um i knew her and um we sent some of our patients we sent some of our patients over there um when you know we knew she was a good surgeon um and so she was the one there i i, I you know I, she had a real you know real good name for herself and um, she was the one there. And I just, I say this to say, you know, God put people on your path. I'm getting emotional. <sighs> Listen, y'all. <laughs> My husband just celebrated his birthday yesterday. Baby. When I tell you they tried to count him out, they tried to count him out, okay? <laughs> The enemy was coming for his life. The enemy was coming for his life. <laughs> and yesterday, my baby just heard he had another he had, he had another opportunity to celebrate his birthday. Okay, <laughs> but I tell you, you gotta go deeper. You gotta go deeper. <laughs> yesterday, my baby just celebrated his birthday. All right. So I say that to say the doctor there told me it was nothing that she could do there. Okay. She said it was nothing that she could do. She had to send him to a specialist because they didn't have the, they didn't have the tools there. They didn't have the equipment there to, um, to help him. They didn't have the stuff there and that he was not going to, he wasn't going to survive. He was, he wouldn't have survived there on um at that hospital and so um she started you know calling people around she started calling them places or whatever and she started you know uh you know connecting me with different doctors or whatever because i knew nothing about this but it was just being at the right place at the right time and have a connection with this type of person even this doctor i mean her her husband was the biggest he was just a, he was a cool he was a cool doctor and you know he will always like you know 
you know, just really encourage me when I was working with him. I had no idea one day that I was going to run into his wife and his wife was going to be the one to help save my husband. It's important why, how you interact on this journey and who you interact with and how you treat people. It's important how you, how you, how you, how you do this thing called life because you just never know who God places in your life or bring back around, uh, were used to help you in a, a situation in your life later on. Right. And so, um, that's how I was able to get my husband. That's how I was able to get my husband, good morning, um, out of that hospital. You know, we had been there already for like 21 days. And so the other hospital was where he was able to really, really get the, the necessary help that he, you know, he needed. But I say all that to say, as I get myself back together, <laughs> I say all that to say that um, a lot of these things that God was doing a lot of time, I, a lot of these things that God was doing and allowing, I had tapped into those nine gifts. I had tapped into those gifts and God was using those gifts to help me, to help my husband, you know, in that process and to help me on my journey. Not only did he help me in the hospital with my husband, but of course he helped me once, you know, my husband came back home. And even when my husband wasn't home, before my husband even came back home. Um, and so the having those gifts makes a, a huge difference. Um, that's, it makes a huge difference. Once I heard the voice of the Lord tell me that my husband was coming back home, like I said, no one can tell me anything different. Um, there is the wisdom of God's word. And then there is the book, the Bible. And then there is a word of wisdom directly from God himself. All right. There is wisdom, you know, God's wisdom. And the Bible even tells about us, you know, if it's something that you don't understand, something you don't know, you ask for wisdom. This is not the same type of word of wisdom. There is a, I think it's in James, it talks about, you know, if you lack, you know, something in life, ask God and he will give you wisdom on that. This is not the same thing as a word from a word of wisdom. Okay. A word of wisdom is the rammer word from God. It's a direct word from God. It's a gift. It is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So you have the logos, which is the Bible, the scripture, and then you have the rammer word, which is a direct word from God, which is God giving you a direct word. Logos mean the word of God, scripture, the Bible, and rama means God's word, spoken word to you. And sometimes it can come as a as an utterance. Good morning. Sometimes his word can come as a, a as an utterance. And I always say, wife, you need both. Okay, you need both. You need to know and understand God's written word. You need to know and understand what God promises are and what his and what his word means and what his word says. But then you also, you also on this journey, if you have been chosen to stand for a marriage or to stay in an unhealthy marriage or to deal with an unhealthy spouse or an unbelieving spouse, if God has called you to this role, you need a ram of word. You need a direct word. You will not do well. You will not do well on this journey long term just with the scripture, the Bible, fast and praying, decree and declaring declarations. You need more. You need more. Because when doubt kicks in, and it will, when doubt kicks in, you can have that written word in your heart and it helps you. You can have that written word in your heart and it helps you. But there is nothing, when I tell you absolutely nothing, like a direct word from God that is going to hold you. I'm so, 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 so big on this because I know, and I always use the hospital experience, you know, I don't like to talk about the hospital experience with my husband, but I seen God use me in the hospital. I seen him use all nine, maybe eight, because I didn't do the interpretation of tongue. Um, so I, I use maybe eight of, of the, of the gifts of the spirit. I see him in action. Use those. I, I heard God tell me, you got to go. You got to go. I heard God say, you got to go start packing your husband's house up. I heard God tell me, you know, you got to get ready. You know, you got to get ready for this. I heard God tell me, you know, when his, when his mom was coming, I, I, I heard God, you know, telling me things. He gave me both a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. And like I said, those two normally intertwine with each other. And so where that strength came from, where I got that, that, that the strength from the, where the people came from, I, I don't know all i know is god orchestra and he ordered my steps and he, he he put everything together my husband was couldn't couldn't talk my cut my husband um couldn't write he couldn't he couldn't spell he didn't know who the president was he didn't he didn't know who i was at one point he was he had a lot of different things going on and when people see him now they like what <laughs> <laughs> they don't even think like this. Like, surely, surely she's making this stuff up. Surely this man is, you know, didn't go through half of the stuff that she said. He couldn't do any of those things. I was in here like his school teacher. The people would come in and I would tell him, I would give him like a, a refresher course. Like, come on, we got to get this. I had, they had a whiteboard in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I would put on there, you know, his name and I would ask him who the president was. And so I would try to do a review with him before, you know, the people came in. I've been coaching and teaching for a long time. Listen, 
And so I was trying to do a review with him so he would know because he had to pass that test in order for him to get to the next steps. Because we needed him to, you know, get off of some of these tools, if you know, get off of some of this medicine because that medicine had started to do something to him. And so we, we needed him to get on a different floor. And so I was in there like prepping. And again, how I had the time and how and where the finances came from and you know how we was able to still you know keep our house and how we was able to still maintain our day-to-day -day lives and how we were still able to you know have everything working and everything on that was nobody but God <laughs> that was nobody but God and so I, I always like to share this story because I know and I see what God did in that hour and during that time and that's how I know this stuff works and so when I tell wise you need to hear from God I ain't just saying it as like a little cute little oh you need to hear from God no you need to hear from God because God is going to give you the details of your journey. God will let you know now how long it takes and when you will begin to start seeing things that is all dependent upon him and the timing of your situation. But God will give you the details. He will give you the secrets. He'll let you know what's going on with the nurses. He'll let you know what's going on with your husband. He'll let you know what's going on with your children. He'll let you know what's going on with work. He'll let you know what's going on with people talking about you and people don't like you. He will let you know. God will order those steps for you. Okay. And so, um, I always, I always just emphasize that God has so much, he has so much that he wants to tell you and he wants to use you beyond your marriage. And he's using your marriage injury only as a place of training ground. That was just the beginning of my, of my place with, you know, with my husband, that was just, just, just training ground. And I always say that wasn't for him. That was for me. Cause he don't remember half. He don't remember half of what took place. And he wasn't supposed to remember that because that wasn't his story. That was, that was for me. That was my story. But now I see, Hey God, how God. I use that to help me help otherwise. So now when I can talk, when I talk to wise, God gives me the word of wisdom or he gives me a word of knowledge or he gives me, uh, you know, a word of faith to speak directly to that wife. And so now when God used me in my consultations and, and, and on, you know, in my coaching curriculum, I can tell a wife, you know, your husband coming home. And I can't, I don't tell that to every wife. I only tell that to certain wives who I, who I feel like God is leading me to tell that to. I don't tell everybody that her husband coming home because I don't know if your husband coming home. I don't, I don't know what your situation is, but I do know what God is telling me and I do let and allow him to guide me and lead me on you know on this journey and so I just want to encourage you why to stay and get connected with someone who can help you on this journey don't just be out here trying to do this on your own this is something they don't really talk even much freely about in church uh, and, and when I was doing my studying this week that was one of the things that I you know I came up I came up upon was you know they don't talk about this stuff as much they don't do this kind of stuff in church and so yes church is you know the hospital is 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 the is the is the main is the main debt. Like we you know we need to show up for church. We need to come together as believers. You need to be connected to a church home. I don't ever want to sit here and say you don't need to be connected to a church home, but you also need a life partner with you on this journey a life coach a wife coach to help you especially if you are dealing with something um as as heavy as as this and so um you need to get connected okay you need to get connected i went to a christian counselor in the beginning of my journey i did i went to a christian counselor when me and my husband was separated and um she gave me advice on my insecurities <laughs> <laughs> and she was trying to give me a diagnosis. She did not give me um, a, the same kind of advice oh, my wife coach was giving me. The things that she was sharing with me was not the same thing that my wife coach was sharing with me. Um, she questioned my insecurities. She, you know, she was trying to diagnose me. But she was only doing what the book told her to do. Like she was doing the book. She was doing what she learned in school. That's what she was supposed to do as a counselor. And so that's why I always come on here and say, ain't no shade against therapists. Ain't no shade against counselors. You know, if you go there or whatever, that's fine. They have uh, certain uh, degrees for certain things to do what, they, what, what, they, they, what they're supposed to do. But a white coach, and especially a white coach who is called, you got to be careful with that. So you got to be able to discern. A wife coach who is called and chosen to be a wife coach should be able to help you tap into the supernatural. A wife coach who is called and chosen to do this journey, who God has told to do this, should help you be able to step into the supernatural and should be able to give you sound counsel from a divine point of view. Okay, from a divine point of view, not just, you know, the little the book stuff. Okay, yeah, we're going to give you some practical, but we're going to give you some biblical and we're going to give you some supernatural. All right, we're going to give you some supernatural. All right, that's how you're going to do well on this journey. Um, and so, again, this is why I offer her buoyancy boost. This is why I offer her buoyancy boost to my wife. It's not not just a oh we're gonna sit here and talk about your husband that's why i always say yes we go through the grief process and in fact you're gonna go through the grief process 
the whole way, the whole time through. That that don't stop because you want to deal with different emotions. But her bunny boots is kind of like your foundation. It's 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 your training ground. It's your it's your boot camp. Okay, it's it's a wife developer, and it really really is the the first step. Um, one of the first steps for her wife to start doing her inner work, okay? And so I do. I ask hard questions. Um, I give you, I give you, I give you book work. I give you work. I give you things to study. I, I do stuff that you may hear these stories in church, but we don't do this stuff in church. You know, you're gonna actually do the work in the her, the her Bonnie Abuse curriculum. Um, I help you to rebuild your life and to be most effective and healthy on this journey. Because just because God has called you to this journey does not mean you're not gonna deal with mental uh, um, anxiety. You're not gonna deal with anxiety. You're not gonna deal with stress. You're not gonna deal with doubt. Or you're not gonna deal with fear. You're gonna deal with all those types of things, and you have to learn how to navigate through that. Okay. And so I'm not just teaching you how to be a wife. I'm teaching you life lessons that will help you um, to be a better wife, to be a better you, and to help you on this journey. You're not going to be able to only tap in to your marriage and with your husband, with your husband's situation. You're going to also be able to tap into other things. Like I said, yes, God helped me a lot with my with my with my marriage, but God also helped me a lot with my family. You know, I was able to call my family and be like, hey. You came up with my spirit today. <laughs> the Lord said this. What you got going on? You know, hey, um, I was praying and your, and your name came up in prayer today. You know, what you have going on? I'm not able to do those types of things without tapping into that other side. And so, so many, so many are trapped at the first part. Oh, my husband is, my husband is, the other woman is, the other woman is. You don't have time for that. <laughs> While you worry about that, God, like, I want to tell you about the other woman. I want to tell you about your husband. I want to tell you the, the plan they got. I want to tell you what they got lined up. I want to tell you about this trip that's coming up. I want to tell you what they got going on. I want to tell you that, but you ain't surrendering because you too busy trying to figure it out on your own. And I want to give you the, I want to give you stuff. I want to, I want to let you know, the Lord used to tell me about different things my husband had going on. When a woman came up, what they had going on, where they was at, he would show me visions and all this type of stuff. That's how you want to get, you want to get to that side of that journey you don't want to just that that surface side because when i tell you when he come home it's just as much work <laughs> it's just as much worse when, when he come home and that's why i always say that hospital situation wasn't for my husband it was for me that was my groundwork i had no idea i was gonna have to relive those two and a half years that he was gone all over again i had i had to i had to walk through that it was like no that ain't no freebie so do your journey do it well the first time so you don't have to do the, so you don't have to alter your season so you don't have to start over you know but wives don't know this kind of stuff if they're not connected with somebody who can help them and so this is what the her bonus boost curriculum is about it's to help you get into alignment help you to learn some basic things that you need to learn about this journey help you to move and rebuild your life and then after your six weeks is up for a whole year, I walk with you. For a whole year, I had a session this week with a young lady, and man, it was heavy. It was heavy. It was heavy. And for the longest, you know, she was, you know, swell. She was, you know, going. She was good. Um, but all of a sudden, something came up. You know, it, you know, something, something had came up. And you can, you can have moments where you know everything is fine. You know, the first thirty days, oh, I'm good, Coach T. First sixty days, oh, I'm good. First 90 days, okay, I'm good. And then boom, all of a sudden something can happen because that's just how this goes. And so that's one of the reasons why I walk with the wife for that long because I know different things can come up. Different things can come up. And so listen, <laughs> doubt is going to happen, okay? Doubt is going to kick in. It's going to show up, okay? And when it show up, you got to know how to navigate through it. You have to know how to navigate through it, all right? Um, this journey, wife, it takes discipline, tenacity, courage, consistency, patience, and intentionality. You need all those things. You need all those things. Um, the race is not given to the swift or the strong or to the skillful, but to the one who endures to the end. Don't allow, don't allow doubt to win your race. Uh, don't allow doubt to win your race. Take your power back, get back into the race, and keep moving forward, all right? You said, what is the name of the book on the fruit of the spirit you talked about last week? I, sh I will share it because um, I don't remember the man's name off top. <laughs> inbox me so I don't forget, okay? Send me a, send me a message in the inbox so I don't forget. Um, yeah, you need, that, you need that book. You need that book. That, that'll be really helpful. So listen, I want to encourage you, wife. I want to encourage you um, to start doing your work. Okay, start doing your work. Don't 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 just sit on this. Don't just don't just just kind of like you know. Oh well, okay. Oh well, okay. 
Listen, we got to get out of the world's way. We got to stop doing. We got to stop doing things the world way. We got to get away from this religion type of mindset, and we got to start working for the kingdom. Okay, we got to start really, really going towards the kingdom. And so, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to sign up to sign up for your wife consultation. Okay, your wife consultation is no obligation. It's just your first step. It's your first step. It's your first step of saying, hey, you know, I have questions. You know, I have concerns. You know, can you help me? Is it something that you know I need to be doing? You know, it. That's it's just it's your first step. It's your first step. Um, you can sign up at my website, www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Um, and sign up for your consultation. Um, I am a more intimate one-on-one. -on -one. Um, a lot of times people ask me, you know, well, do you do group coaching or do you, you know, do you do, you know, um, support groups? I don't, I don't. And because I am a mental health wife coach, I like to bond to my mental health. <laughs> I like to monitor my mental health and I want to give whites the best experience. I want to give them the best experience. And so me having that one-on-one -on -one time with them, walking with them, having that intimate time with them, it gives me an opportunity to, to learn her. It gives me an opportunity to sit with her. It gives me an opportunity to, you know, grow with her and walk with her. It gives me an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to speak through me so I can speak back to her. And so that's why I'm more of an intimate uh, wife coach. I don't, we don't, we don't do group coaching. Um, I don't do support groups. I don't, I don't, I don't do that stuff right now. Um, that's just not what God has called me at. I'm more of a one-on-one -on -one because I want that wife to get that necessary part that she needs in that that curriculum i feel like it's the first part it's the first steps of her getting that part and so um the consultation is a 60 minutes consultation but that consultation ain't just like a little oh we just have a consultation no it's heavy i ask i send you over a questionnaire i'm um, an, an assessment i ask you some 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 deep questions even there because i don't like wasting your time and i definitely don't want you wasting my time <laughs> So I send you over an assessment. I ask you some hard questions there, so we can know. I can already know if this is if this is a good or, or, or not. If we, you know if we if we're right fit or not, because I take what I do very seriously because I know the the extent of your mental uh, health on this journey. It can really really do something to you, and because. Uh, God has allowed me to be his mouthpiece and, to, and to, to serve and, and to share. I have to protect my mind. I have to protect myself. And so I don't like to waste a lot of time. So that's why I always tell wives, you know, this is a, a serious, this is very a very serious journey. And I take it very, very serious. But if you're willing to do the necessary work, I'm here to help you. All right. And so I want to encourage you today to sign up for your consultation. www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Listen, y'all go on about y'all day. Enjoy the rest of y'all self-care Saturday. I, I I realized last week I had told y'all happy self-care Tuesday and it was a Saturday. I thought y'all weren't feeling good. <laughs> I was not feeling good last week. But today, I want to encourage you to make sure that you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Do something that you enjoy doing. Make sure, make sure, wise, that you prioritize yourself. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself. Make sure that you are getting to that place where you can hear from God. It is important. It is important during this time, all right? I will talk to you guys soon, all right? Blessings.